Okay. Hey everyone. Thank you for joining us. We're the Rillennials. I'm Ruby. I'm Pat. And we have another, well, we have a special guest with us, Chris Munoz. He's going to be talking a lot of politics with us today. We actually, this is a political episode. We are going to be giving you guys what, what happened yesterday. Day. Yeah, we're recording this as of Wednesday. As of Wednesday, November so November seventh, the fresh. day after the midterm elections. We're here with Chris Munoz. He's been very giving with his time, and uh, uh, we're yes. glad to have him. So everybody, welcome him to the show. Woo! You do a little. Hey, thanks for having me. In your car, wherever you're at. What's up? What do you? What's? Tell us about yourself. Well, um, you know. Uh, Politics is something I like to follow, and I'm working on a master's in public administration, so I'm kind of understanding like mm. the dynamics of how the bureaucracy and politics and everything all comes together. But so I'm excited. Thanks for inviting me to talk about, you know, what happened yesterday. Yeah. So wow! First of all, wow! 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 wow. wow. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. G. Wow! Absolutely. So. I still feel so, like there's not enough time to digest. Everything. Yeah, let's just kind of touch on some of the things that just happened. Uh, one of the one of the biggest and most um, obvious, or one of the most um, I don't know important or no, notorious things that just happened is that Beto O'Rourke lost mm. the Man. Senate race. I cannot Mar- believe that Texas to Ted mm. Cruz to Ted Cruz, y'all. Ted Cruz. <sighs> Ted Cruz. Literally How confusing for both of and these. And figuratively, oh SMH. Oh, man. That, that hurt, um, man. If you guys don't know, Beto O'Rourke was a representative in Texas, not a senator, uh, who had some uh, a little bit of notoriety in Texas uh, for being a representative, but he most recently became very, very popular, really within the last month or so. Some say a little too late too little too late Mm. in the senator race in uh texas he um what is very interesting about him is how much money that was poured into the state from outside state Mm -hmm. donors Mm -hmm. he raised uh over the last three months alone he raised 38 million Mm dollars Uh, mm-hmm. For his campaign for what? senator in Texas, thirty-eight right. wait million dollars, million dollars, which is even more than Ted Cruz had. And that's actually a record. Equally. I think that's the most that any campaign has ever like raised, like uh, without like CPACs or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's, so it's a it's actually very very profound. Individual donors. Um, yeah. Uh, I from what I have heard in the news, which is limited to what I've been listening to on the radio, mm-hmm. I haven't read a whole lot. Um, full disclosure, I've been paying more attention to local. Uh, elections in Kansas City, Kansas and Missouri than I have been to outside National. elections. Yeah. But from my understanding is that it was always going to be a close race. Democrats are very hopeful, uh, but that um, ultimately it was more or less expected that Ted Cruz was going to win. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a little mm-hmm. bit deflating. It's not the end all be all of politics in the U.S., but God, I feel <laughs> really hate Ted Cruz. I really wanted him to lose. I, I would mean, have liked I don't know to see if you him lose. That a hot take or not, but I can't stand him. Right. Uh, even outside of politics, uh, I'm I consider myself an relatively independent, mm-hmm. a, a progressive independent. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I very much consider myself to be pro business and uh, to be. There's some aspects that are pretty conservative that mm-hmm. you consider conservative. Right. Uh, but uh, just Ted Cruz just irks the shit out of me. Like I can't stand his voice, I can't stand his face, and I can't stand his condescending tone um, when he's talking to people about politics. Mm. So I mean, what do you think, Chris? Um, I think half of his own party hates him, if not even more, hates him. Like everybody hates him, but obviously, you know, his side, the Republican side, is going to support him, and that's what they did. Um, I think it's amazing that even though Beto lost. It shows that Texas is a stronghold for the red, for Republican side. Yeah. But Beto, a progressive, a strong, strong progressive, stood strong with his morals, his values, and he had a strong showing in yeah. Texas. It was a very, yeah. it was a relatively close yeah. race. I, I mean, it was like, like within two percent, three percent. Yeah, something. I mean, they mm-hmm. both had um, over three million people vote for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was between like. I, don't quote me, but I think it was the difference of three or four hundred thousand votes mm-hmm. in a race that they both got over three million right. votes. Right, right. Um, 
which is pretty, you know, it's pretty mm-hmm. significant. And I think that what's interesting to me, and I haven't really seen much reporting on it, is the impact of the Latino vote in mm-hmm. Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like, um, Bet Beto's stance on immigration, he was he was a little more favorable towards immigration. So I feel like he, that captured a lot of the uh, Hispanic vote. But I don't know where Ted Cruz got that from. Like to to be neck and neck with him. I think is it because he people, had been there already? Like I think a lot of people hmm. underestimated the um, vote outside of cities in Texas. Mm-hmm. I mean, Texas yeah. is a very very big state, mm-hmm. and Absolutely. if you want to, if you're only looking at the lens of Austin, Dallas, mm-hmm. Houston, mm-hmm. then you're um, not looking at the entire picture. Right. Um, yes. I mean, there's all of West Texas. I mean, I don't even oh, know how many people West live out Texas. there, but. It's uh mm-hmm. there's if you look at the map of people who voted Democratic re- versus Republican, I mean it's almost exclusively people who live in those counties of Austin, Houston, Dallas, cities, big metropolitan uh, areas, yeah, much, metropolitan areas, mm-hmm. and it's just discounting all of the people who live in rural mm-hmm. areas. Right, right. And uh, no, you're right, you're right. So if you look at the states and and the results, what you'll see is it's like almost and and a lot of political scientists uh, they. They say that the future is going to be cities versus rural, and and that you see that in Texas, like you see Houston, you see El Paso, you see Dallas, Fort Worth, Lubbock, all Beto, all the rural areas were Ted Cruz. So there's definitely that that tug of war that's going on right now between city life and rural life. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully, who knows what that means for the future, um, but but yeah, it was it was interesting. It was it's interesting. Like I said, like it's so early to digest everything yeah to read and see all the results and we're just talking about what actually has just happened when we're tr- you know we're trying to give our perspective on um what could happen in the future why we think things happen but ultimately we're still waiting for things to unfold this is completely new to us we a lot of us are just shocked at what happened you know um we're just trying to still process through what the results actually were you know i woke up this morning still not knowing what some some results were from last night so yeah. that's what we're trying to get you guys is just kind of the facts the news what's happening and just our take on what what could happen what this could mean for our future yeah and this is these are more of the no, no, notorious national races mm-hmm. and one mm-hmm. another one is the florida governor race mm-hmm. right um mm-hmm. that was Gillum versus um dos santorini or something like that uh, anyways, Gillum was the the black guy, Andrew Gillum. I think it was Andrew Gillum. He barely lost also. And I want to say that oh, was yeah. like within thousands of votes. Mm-hmm. And they also had millions of people voting in that race. Uh, that was a very contentious race uh, oh, because of the, the Republican was mm-hmm. apparently had said something very racist. <sighs> Addressing him as a monkey or something like that. Yeah, oh, wow. So what he said was he was on national television and he said the voters need to not monkey around. Which whoever says monkey around, like nobody ever even uses that phrase monkey around. And and you know supposedly he said that in an innocent way, but yeah, yeah. Uh, he's I going mean, against the first potential African American governor, and he says that. I want to go ridiculous. so far as to that say people don't use the term monkey around because I use the term monkeying around. Never oh, heard he you said use that term. Up. He I've said never. Sam, up. have you heard him re- use that term? Like, not, Sam is shaking his head. We've never heard. But him. <laughs> I've never, not around us. I've never used it in the context. <laughs> not willing or. He said monkey up. I've not never, monkey around, monkey up. I've never so. consciously used it in the context of referring to someone who's black mm-hmm. because it is a known racist mm-hmm. phrase towards that. Yeah, like, like I mean, for me, even if he didn't mean to use it in a racist way, it just shows that he's he's uh, culturally incompetent to say enough. that he doesn't understand the perspective of minorities. Oh my gosh, and, and, uh, in, and in Florida, in Florida, yeah, in exactly. Florida like exactly. you need to be sensitive to those well, yeah, types he can, of things. He can be like, "Oh, I didn't mean that." Okay, well then, all your constituents, well, California, I mean, uh, Florida has a big minority population. You're yeah. culturally incompetent. How are you going to lead us? That's true, and that's that's a, that's a very true statement. Um, and I and I think that someone in his position would be aware of it. I mean, I just don't think the the phrase "monkeying around" in general in, is inherently uh-huh. racist. I think contextually, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. no, absolutely, given yeah. that, yeah. that contextually, context, it is. absolutely, yeah. he should have been aware 
that what he's saying, given his circumstances in a race mm-hmm. against a black man, mm-hmm. it would be perceived as racist. And, and, and I don't have a problem saying the phrase, yeah, yeah. Quit monkeying th- around to a bunch of kids. And, and he, didn't, and he didn't say <laughs> monkeying around. He actually said, like, you know? monkeying up. Like, that's what he said. Yeah. yeah it wasn't monkeying say, around. It, it, he it, said, like, monkeying yeah, up. Yeah, what he did say was a lot something more racist. Different. It was something different. But, but yeah, so it doesn't change the argument that he was... Rel- that it's he dog whistle, should be perceived dog whistle, as racist, racist and yeah. that he um definitely it's 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 a profound thing and what i was listening to in the news today was about how it's it's cra- it's crazy he like he and he won't that it's it's <laughs> florida is on another level are, of crazy people, y'all people are legitimately <laughs> i mean trump worried. has houses there too you know trump is from there kind of to some extent like you know people are legitimately florida. worried about the florida. fact that what that means i mean it could potentially mean that racism is winning you fear know, like, is winning you yeah know, fear yeah but i mean i think racism like, racism stems think, from fear racism think, might stem yes, from fear it but does I, I don't think that it so fear is it winning equates i don't think it's a, an equivalent i think that racism is more it's, it's it might stem from fear but the e the implications of it is not Fear based, it's power based. It is so power based. For me, it's, okay, it's a power so dynamic. It came from a place of fear potentially, but it ultimately Under. the the problem is not how they feel about it; it's how they react. Racist people. Mm-hmm. It's how they react in a way to implement and project power against mm-hmm. another race. Mm-hmm. But, but I don't like personally as a minority. I don't care that if you're racist. If you keep your racist views to yourself. At home with you and your family, where I have a problem is when you start running for positions of power mm-hmm. against mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. That's when racism to or me or to is represent the issue. me or to claim Make that you're trying to represent me. And yeah. Stuff, you know? um, so the, to me, it's very, very mm-hmm. profound that mm-hmm. race. Uh, there's all kinds of microcosms uh, in terms of what might have impacted that race. There's a large, a very large a Jewish retirement community. Um, they, I, I heard, I think it was on APR that there was some sort, one of the candidates had said something they could perceive as anti-Semitic, oh, no. uh, and that, that they may have influenced it. And mm-hmm. the, the, the thing is that the margin of victory is so tiny mm-hmm. between those two candidates that like <clears throat> any demographic or any, um, race or any particular movement could have swayed that vote. Yeah. So it's just a very interesting race. Um, it's it's profound that they won. Uh, but I will say that there are a lot of good things that happened yesterday in terms of the uh, election day. Yes. November 6th election day. Uh, here locally, there was uh, a lot. I'm super duper excited. I couldn't be more proud to be a Kansan today. I posted it on my Facebook. Um, Kansas is not the biggest... Um, it's not the richest state. It's not the most educated. It's not the most progressive state. But they are very, very um, practical. Mm-hmm. And today or yesterday, they elected a Democratic governor. They got rid of that notion of that idiotic and that psychopath Chris Kobach, oh, oh. who is going to come in and just be uh, what I perceived and what, in my opinion, would be a con- an incompetent craziness. asshole. Yeah. And uh, I'm very, very proud of my state today. Um, wow, I don't, I don't know how else to put it, but I'm very, very uh, glad to be a Kansan today. Yeah, I am too. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, so Texas, Florida, Kansas, any other notable um, states that we should be keeping an eye on that you guys want to bring up? We have a break coming up soon, but anything else? Um, I have tons to go on uh, and speak on, but we can touch on more after the break. So Okay. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we're millennials here. We're here um, with our, our perspective of what's going on with the, the current election day. Uh, hopefully you all had a chance to vote um, a lot of the time that we um, people feel try to make you feel bad about not voting, including me. But like you can vote next time. There's always next time. And just please try to make an impact. And and that's what we're here to do. And we're here to make an impact on your guys' lives personally, but also you can have you have the power to make an impact on your on your own life by voting. 
and uh, don't let anybody take that power away from you. Mm -hmm. And so we're here to just talk about like what has happened and what uh, what can be happening. So, yeah. So stay yeah. tuned. When we come back for the break, we're going to talk about more of what happened at this midterm election. All right. Welcome back to the Millennial Hour. I'm Pat. I'm Ruby. And we are still joined with Chris Munoz. Chris Munoz. Thank you for joining hey us on this conversation about uh, the recent political ongoings in our country. Our midterm elections. That's the midterm elections for those of you who have been sleeping under a rock and or living. <laughs> yeah. Um, and but we're, we're here to inform you. We're here to inform and we're here to uh, just talk about what has happened. I mean, that's uh, maybe, you know, and we're just trying to process it, too. And uh, so, interestingly enough, a lot of very important things have happened. And uh, mm -hmm. recently, there has been a shift in... <laughs> well, a shift well, in what? Uh, uh, sorry, I was at a loss for words for a second. Um, a very important thing that has happened in this election, locally at least, is... Um, so we were talking about Beto O'Rourke and Ted Cruz mm -hmm. earlier, and that's a, a different state. And we we're talking about the Florida governor race as well. But more locally, mm -hmm. the impact is uh, pretty profound. Uh, I would say the impact locally here in Kansas City in particular is very, very profound because yeah. of the difference in voting that has happened across state lines. Yeah. Um, but one very, very notable thing that has happened is Sharice David's has recently beat out Kevin Yoder, the, I don't know, how many term incumbent mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the third district mm -hmm. of the House of Representatives mm -hmm. here in Kansas City, uh, as the first Native American woman, first lesbian woman, mm -hmm. uh, no. to uh, hold that office here in Kansas, in Kansas at yeah. least. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just so profound. I'm so happy for her. I'm so uh, glad for her. I mean, I can say that I was initially going for Brent Welder, mm -hmm. for who was running against her in the primaries for that position. But mm -hmm. wow, like it's it's a very profound thing. Kevin Yoder, if those of you who are not local, I mean, uh, we're we're airing this show for people who are local here in Kansas City. But if you don't know, maybe you're here and you're local and you lived here your whole life and you don't understand how profound that really is. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it's truly amazing. I think I think on the on the national scale, what it is is Kansas voters, you all who voted, did your part in helping to put the brakes on the Trump administration. We help in the big scheme of things. We help turn and flip the House of Representatives. So now Democrats yeah. are in charge. So now um, checks and balances, um, executive, legislative, judicial branch, uh, the legislative branch with the House of Representatives can put a break on um on the trump administration any decision any laws that they want to put in place mm -hmm. yeah. we can put a break because people like sharice davis stepped up people like everybody who voted stepped up and voted and made it happen and she so. gives a voice to those i mean she's she's native mm -hmm. she's lgbtq LGBTQ. <laughs> um so letters. she yeah i know a lot of letters but she's she's representing a lot of voices that hadn't been uh, traditionally heard so that's why this is a big win this is a big win this is uh this is huge mm -hmm. it's it's mm -hmm. this is huge it's insane mm -hmm. uh like i said i'm super happy for her but i'm not i'm, I'm not just happy for her i'm genuinely happy for the people who she represents whom she represents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because how long has it been in America where mm -hmm. those people in the LGBT, LGBTQ right, community it's hard. and uh, <laughs> uh, Native, Native American, American yes. community, I mean, some people might argue that the LGBTQ community has mm -hmm. received more notoriety, more attention than even the Native American community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but she's there. She's a voice for both, and yes. it's a very powerful, mm -hmm. it's a very profound mm -hmm. voice. Uh, like I said, I, I was initially on board for Brent Wilder, who was an, endorsed by Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But at, at, after the fact, it's in learning about who Sharice Davis mm -hmm. is. I'm fully on board for that, and I'm fully I'm here for this. Yeah, right. um, we out here. So <laughs> it's, it's it's great. Um, I think it's a move in the right direction. She's uh, a rep, House of Representatives, um, third district for Kansas. 
And Kevin Yoder, I mean, I think he was like in the pockets of the uh, Koch brothers or something like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, like it's very, very, was he? it's very profound that what she did to mm-hmm. win that seat. And um, wow! So congratulations to Sharice Davis. Absolutely, we look congratulations. forward to hearing more about this movement in the future and where that uh, and the direction that that's moving. Uh, a very another more um, uh, important event or ongoing from that from the election is the kansas gubernatorial race laura man kelly beat chris kobach hmm. that effing psychopath um, yeah, yeah. yeah. thank goodness my we're all from kansas so that's why right. we're uh, like this is, that's why this is a thing if for you know us, okay? anything about chris kobach you know he's a psychopath <laughs> um hashtag hot takes Hashtag and Pat's opinion. Hashtag. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know who you're representing right now. But uh, personally, I was on board okay, for. So uh, yeah. I voted independent. I actually I voted for Greg Orman. I mean, I oh, uh, yeah. I, I was you? very on board for oh, third party no. for oh, independent. No. Uh, I was on the independent independent movement too. Honestly, and so no, no, my no. thought philosophy behind that. that was that I'm tired of the two party movement. I'm very, very tired of but, it. But That's at, all you see. At, at the end of Fred at the end of the campaign, Chris Kobach was spending some. There were some some groups who were pushing people to vote for Greg Orman because what they found was people who voted for Greg Orman, if Greg Orman didn't exist, would have voted for Lauren Kelly, mm-hmm. and so basically Greg Orman existed to take votes away from Laura Kelly. And so wow. he played in favor of Chris Kobach. So for me, when you say that, that's just kind of hard to hear because it's like, man, that's, pe- that's people... False. That's false. That's a false equivalent. He didn't I, exist to take votes away from Laura Kelly. He I, I mean, did you, did, I mean, did you hate Laura Kelly for a reason or anything like no, that? Yeah, I exactly. Didn't. I exactly. liked her. If, I liked it, her. If, it was, if it was, if it was Chris Kobach more. or Laura Kelly, who would you vote for? Laura Kelly. Okay, then. then what? But Greg Orman then, and Laura Kelly. But that's a false equivalent. It's a false equivalent. You can't say that he existed to take no. votes away from her. No, not not to he show existed. like the Kobach he campaign. He had his agenda. Like, he 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 had things he wanted. No, he didn't. He, he didn't. He's a good he's a good guy. But Chris Kobach even 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 supported him, and they put funds towards his campaign. They were doing telethons, telling people, "Hey, you know, vote for Gore, Greg Orman." People who that were leaning Democratic, who were leaning Independent, they would push and put funds to make to make sure that they would vote for Orman. Because look, like if, if he he took twenty percent of the votes. Chris Kobach would have been our next governor. So you fell I for me. You that. fell into his trap. I think. No. Okay. And we so can. There's two ways of looking at it. And we can agree to disagree. But you've just you just said you would have voted for Kelly had Orman not existed. Exactly. I don't think this is the same. This is not the same. Orman argument. never had a chance to win. Um, Independence. Oh, okay. Man. So there's I, two ways of looking oh, at it. Okay. So for I me, know. I can talk about. For this. me, it's not about whether or not he had a chance to win. For me, it's expressing my interest as a voter, mm-hmm. as a citizen, mm-hmm. for a third party. Right. Yeah. It's right. me. Yeah. It's, I believe it's, in third parties. It's oh, expressing oh, like that, that right. like, okay, I understand that it, the real race is between Democrat and Republican. Sadly. But but yes. for me, Sadly. it has yes. to prove a point. Like. I agree. If I know that Democrat Republican is going to win, it doesn't matter to me. Right. And right. I think more people have to have the disposition to say they have to be with the okay with the vo- their vote not meaning something. Mm-hmm. If we get ten, so I think we got ten percent or something yeah, around yeah. that. Yeah. 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 If next year we get twelve percent, if the mm-hmm. if the next mm-hmm. election we get fifteen, if the right. next election we right. get twenty. Right. My point is that it's very important. For that voice to matter. Right. And I don't think it's fair that we should be scared out of our position right, right. to mm. vote for something that we right. don't believe no, you're in. Right, you're right. Yeah. And you're right. it's not you're fair right. that I, ha- as a citizen, have to vote for something that uh, I vote against something rather than vote for something. But, I chose to vote for something uh-huh. rather than vote against something. Okay. And I think that's my right. And I don't right. feel like I'm wrong for that. For one, I think that you fell into the Kobach trap. Uh, you can disagree with that. Two, um, I mean, you don't you, like you said. If he didn't exist, you would have voted for Kelly. Uh, three, you don't. I don't even think. I think you pre- uh, just assumed that you were presumptuous thinking that Laura Kelly was bad or something because she's no, part of the Democratic No, I don't think party. she's bad. I think that. Uh, you just didn't want to vote my, for her because you just want to be independent. No, my philosophy or, is that the argue, that. 
Why did you not? My perception of Democrat versus Republican is skewed because yeah. of yeah. what it means. They're so uh, being a Democrat or a Republican means right. something. It yeah. means that you owe the party something. It means that you are owed a um, that you owe something to that platform right, right. and that whether or not you believe in it that's what you have to do an independent platform on the other hand means that you're not owed to either one that you're allowed an independent voice i, I, I don't that, feel like i'm beholden to the democratic party i'm not saying you well, as a voter anybody, i'm saying anybody, i'm though, saying them as are... candidates mm. Mm. So mm-hmm. us as voters, we all have obviously we have the choice to make that decision. Right. But I just I'm choosing mm-hmm. as a voter to not make that system a continuation of the past. Mm-hmm. I'm choosing to elaborate our choices as voters. And I will continue mm-hmm. to do that mm-hmm. as a voter, even if it means that my vote isn't gonna count. I will I think it's very important to say I it, it to me is very important to bring the independent vote up from three percent to seven percent. Even if I'm only at seven percent, but maybe next time. How do you guys think it would have been if Kobach would have won? But I don't have it. I don't have anything against Laura Kelly. I don't have anything against that. I don't. uh, Other than the fact that she's beholden to the two party system, Mm -hmm. I'm just not a fan of the two party system. I agree with probably eighty to ninety percent of the Democratic platform, Mm -hmm. but I don't. There's parts of it that I don't agree with. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I I don't think that uh, I should have to say. I, I shouldn't have to fear that I my politi- my real political perspectives. I shouldn't have to fear the fact that I'm pro gun, mm-hmm. that uh, that I'm pro whatever, mm-hmm. and in my own democratic position. I think Democrats are pro gun, I think. Well, yeah. okay, in general they might be, but there's it's so polarized to say something mm-hmm. that might be perceived something right, different right. will eliminate you yeah. from the conversation, yeah. and I don't right. think that mm-hmm. that's fair. Uh, and so, therefore, I appreciate and I invite third-party conversation that yeah, has a place right. in the middle ground. Right. Yeah. I don't know how to add <laughs> to any of that. <laughs> so, so who did you did you vote? I mean, I, I, so you voted. Who did you, you vote for? You guys want to know something? I, I did not vote. That. I did not vote. Oh man! I did not vote. So it, it, we voted, voted, and I did not no, vote. We voted for different people. And, and I was we're all I, different. I That's wanted. Crazy. I wanted to. I, I did want to bring Why this not? up. Why didn't I vote? Honestly, <laughs> uh, it was probably a lot of sheer laziness, to be honest. Oh, no. A lot oh, of no, sheer laziness. No, and no. it really does hurt to no. just be like, hey, oh, I didn't no, vote. No, no. But you know what? I have to it say hurts. I have to say that because I can't I can't not say that right, I didn't right, vote. Right, like I can't right. sit here and say, Yeah, I endorse this person. Right. Here's here's how I feel. I feel like my individual vote didn't mean as much as my voice could have meant. Like, had I, prior to the elections, did my research, maybe shared my thoughts, I could have had more of an impact than that one single vote because of our platform, because of what we do. And that's that's honestly what I'm kicking myself in the butt about is that maybe I wasn't so involved and informed mm-hmm. prior mm-hmm. to be able to at least influence those people that did go out and vote because i didn't it go out and vote sleep at night you know what you're saying that it, it lets me sleep it lets, it lets me it lets me sleep at night and you know what i it it doesn't <laughs> hurt my it you know i i'm not I'm like not, not trying to i call, know i, I know call, what it feels like to see everybody's like i voted right, stickers I and bullshit. i didn't i call bullshit and i think that that's not right i think that if that i didn't vote if you're my position is that if you're going to not vote, it should be an informed opinion to not vote. It should not be because you didn't take the time to research the issues. But here's the thing. Yes, I agree with that. But at the same time, I felt into that as well. Like, I, 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 I've I, analyzed, I've critically thought, and I'm still trying to critically think in, in like, process what happened. And I, I know that there's other people that fall in the same category as me. That are informed, that are involved, that are have mm-hmm. opinions that didn't go out and vote. I know a lot of people that didn't vote, y'all. Mm-hmm. Like you guys yeah. voted, but I know a lot of people, that, lot didn't of people that didn't vote. Right, right. And so that's the thing. I'm I'm just here saying that I personally didn't vote. I do care about what's happening, mm-hmm. but I didn't go put my vote in. And that doesn't mean that it doesn't matter what I think. 
Um, but you know what? We'll get back to this topic Ooh. after our break. Man, you guys so all to say about it, though. marinate on this. Um, you're you're here with the Millennial Hour, and we'll be back after say this break. We're here with Chris. Say by the bell. <laughs> all right. Welcome back to the Millennial Hour. I'm Pat. I'm Ruby. And we're back here with Chris Munoz. Hey guys. Continuing the conversation about what just happened. I'm uncomfortable. Yesterday. You know, Wait, what? Oh, she's on the hot oh, seat. That's oh, why. Oh, she's on the hot seat. Uncomfortable. Let's talk a little about hot that. for you over there. It's a little hot for you right now. You're uncomfortable. Why might you be uncomfortable, Ruby? Is it because you made a deliberate she choice not to vote? She didn't do her civic vote? duty, I think. That's what it is. Because I did not vote. You made a deliberate y'all. choice not to vote uh, for the future of our country, it sounds like. I didn't. I just let y'all vote. Thank you, people, for voting. Um, well, can I ask what your decision was on that? Because you, I, I don't accept... The argument that life just happened to me and I didn't vote. I believe that you made a deliberate decision not to vote. Uh, well, here's here's personally here's what happened to me. I thought I had registered in Missouri. I was not registered in mm-hmm. Missouri. Mm-hmm. I did not have time to go vote in Kansas, mm-hmm. where apparently I was registered, and. I just didn't do it. I didn't take the time off work to go do it. Mm-hmm. Um, What's the registration cutoff in Missouri? And in Kansas, it's 30 days, right? I think it's a month. Um, Something um, like that, yeah. I in Missouri, I think it was, it might have been 60 days. I don't know. But I know I know by the cutoff, I, I, was, I, I thought I had done it by the cutoff. 60, and yeah. I didn't. But here, here's the thing, y'all. I I don't feel like yeah, that. Yeah, 60-day cutoff. I don't feel like my individual Six vote mattered so much. Six and I know cutoff. people are going to get on to Six, me about the, that. Wait, there's a, a six-day six cutoff? cutoff? No, there's no six-day cutoff. Do you guys want me to look this up? So you had, a, you have to Google it. You had less than a week to register to vote? But but look, but that will, I will defend Ruby, though, in saying that, you, that 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 is, I, I think, one, the whole system is set up to be complicated, so we don't know how to vote. So that's voter suppression to some extent. But two, there's so many. The whole system, though, too, is set up to where we have to work 40, 50, 60, 70 hour days. And we have to pay. We have to work paycheck to paycheck. I don't, um, but I don't it, buy it, that excuse either because it's very early voting. But, I but, but, voted but people, last people week. are more occupied with trying to make ends meet than knowing and being acknowledged with what's going on in the October political 10th. system or in D.C. I went and voted last week. Politics. Right. There was no lines. Zero but, lines. I was in and out. But, 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 you're, but you're talking about people who don't have cars, people who are single, single parents, people who are working on, or living on welfare, people who are people in different situations. Mail-in ballots. No, mail-in people ballots. who have other things to worry mail-in about ballots. than what, but, what's going to happen. But, but it's a paradox, though, because it's a paradox because they can't vote because of that. But that's also why they should vote, yes. because if they can vote, then they can get social welfare programs. They can get, you can get education mail- You can literally grants, print, print like out from your home computer. It's a paradox. A mail-in ballot. You can print it out wherever. You can. Um, uh, you can't vote online, but you can uh, mail-in ballot. It, it, it's so complicated, though, man. I mean, we're all Is college it, educated. I'm, I'm, I, I was a little. So let me bring close. this up. I'm okay with that decision that I make. I'm okay with it. And as much voter shaming has been going on right now, I'm not okay with it. I'm I'm okay with it. And I'm the what you are not okay You're, with it. And you voted. Okay with so you don't have to be okay with you. So I'm in the okay middle because I also a part of me is not. I okay wish with I would have voted, but I'm okay that I didn't vote. I'm okay with people. Who I'm okay with the results. Research the issues and choose at make an educated decision yeah. to abstain from the vote. I'm yeah. not okay with people who don't vote because I didn't go out they of didn't my have way. The time or they didn't. Uh, I to did. I did issues. what I could, and the circumstances did not allow but me the, to. Part vote. Part of me irks irks me though because you have you're you're blessed to be a citizen. You're blessed mm-hmm. to have that vote, and so much of Latino community and so many communities don't have they don't that. have that privilege yeah. to vote. And you have to represent us. You have to say that, you know what, I'm going to stand up to Chris Kovac. I'm going to stand up to Kevin Yoder. I'm going to stand up to the Trump administration. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put my vote. Or so many Holly, people cannot. Who yeah. won you know? and so in Missouri are about that. In too. the state that you live in. Well, but here, here's the thing. And I was, I don't know if I said this while we were on the air or if we were not on the air. But for me, it doesn't hurt that I my individual vote d- didn't count. For me, it was more like my voice could have counted. My social media voice could have counted. When I talk to people, that could have counted. So, like, I wish I would have been more involved into making a difference so in other people's decisions. Do as I say, not as I do kind of thing is what you're, you're 
adopting. Yeah, but do, do as I say, essentially, I feel like my impact could have been greater if I had oh. used my voice, not my vote, which is unfortunate for me to feel that no, way. It would have been great if you'd done honestly, both. It yeah, been great it would have been. It would have been. Okay, we are recording, right? We are recording. Okay. Why do you always do that? Boy, it, was, it wasn't moving. It wasn't moving. So I got a little Boy, bye. That's what a lot of Yeah, you talking. gotta Boy, wait. Bye. But I just, I just want to bring. I don't want people to feel bad because they didn't vote. But I do want you to know that all we have is the future. I want you to feel bad if you didn't vote. Pat, moving forward, Pat moving wants forward, you to feel let's, bad if you didn't vote. vote. But for a very specific reason, if you didn't vote because you truly understood the issues and you truly but i don't think that's the case a lot of times I pat i don't i think you're living you're right. in a dream world you're by not. thinking that people no are people were. are so informed that they're gonna choose not to yeah. vote i don't think so I, no i, I think people are so not i understand that that's not the reality but i'm telling people it's your responsibility as a citizen to no, vote you and can if, do whatever you want and the, the responsible decision to make is to choose to not vote if you don't want to vote for a logical informed reason it's not responsible to not vote just because simply you didn't know what was being voted on or because you didn't have the time Pat, quote unquote. that's not for you to decide for other people if people don't want to vote they literally don't have to vote if they don't want to even if they're informed if they don't want to vote they don't have to that's the you you exercise you, you exercise your right you exercise your right mm -hmm. i exercise my right mm -hmm still didn't do it you know what i'm saying what i'm saying is i'm 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 being for real like i right. wish i could have voted and i wish i would have registered in time i thought i had registered in time in missouri mm -hmm. didn't register in time i was actually mm -hmm. still registering kansas couldn't get didn't know that in time so mine was but your decision has an impact people like you have does an impact. it have an impact if people like you my voice has all, an impact if all the people like you had voted uh, who or had not voted? Maybe or what it meant. then maybe uh, Claire McCaskill would have been voted into office, possibly, and she would have. Mm -hmm. And instead but that, of that, but, that, Republican but that's that follows, that's all. What if theoretical right now? Not, that's not a reality, and that's not what we're talking that's about. We're talking conversation. It's yeah, an important thing and, to talk about, and that's something that, it's as a, our other conversation was, this is something that I will take and I will learn from later. I mm -hmm. I literally cannot sit. And re like think about the mistakes that I made. I have to just think about how can I fix it in the future. It's not fair for the people who have to deal with the decisions of Jeff Hawley to because of people like you who had the right and the voice to choose. Yeah, but I also exercised it. I didn't. I I I chose but, right. not to have, have a right choice to do that. that place of I just it's my kinda. personal yeah. opinion. Yeah. Yeah. It's my personal opinion Ish. that you chose to do that under. The wrong circumstances. Yeah, you weren't, didn't do it. In and an and and that's position. that's for you to keep, Pat, because so that's not for me to just, have. You're you not. Just, you don't want to give me that because I'm not taking that. Like I made that decision. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. You guys can you guys can sit here and talk to me judge about it you. all day long. Judge you, right you can now. judge me it, all day man. long, but I know there's people out there that no no didn't sure. vote sure. that want to be informed Absolutely. that want to vote Absolutely. on the next Absolutely. issue Absolutely. in the next election that it's want their voice to be heard. Complicated life is complicated. But you want to know some, what, For people? Sure. You do have a voice mm -hmm. w w regardless of an election. You can talk about things mm -hmm. regardless of voting. You can go stand up for something regardless of voting. And I have said this before on our podcast. Mm -hmm. I'm a big corporate social responsibility advocate. I think that businesses and much, like what businesses do and what they represent is going to be – more impactful than a lot of times politics bureaucracy and just mm -hmm. like um mm -hmm. just that bu just that bureaucracy mm -hmm. and how like mm -hmm. systems work mm -hmm. i think that for me i'm just mm -hmm. a bit corporate social responsibility advocate and um although i didn't vote and i do i do have an interest in politics i do like to keep it keep keep informed mm -hmm. but here's the thing like if if i'm going to be living true to what i think um, I'm going to try to do something that is impactful in business, not 100% in politics. So They coincide, though, man. They I definitely think. coincide. Whether regulate, they, they, they regulate, do, the, they do coincide. regulate the market the or not, do regulate the market. being informed and being an informed voter because you, it's your responsibility as a citizen to be aware of what politicians intend to do with those aspects of your life. Yeah, if I choose to 
let it or maybe i just want to survive because i'm a poor millennial and i'm trying to figure that's out not how an to excuse it's not an excuse I, no, it's that's not an, an excuse i understand that though man because people it's are hustling excuse. man I mean, make it but it's but it's fun. not an excuse that. but it's a reality i know i, okay, I know that's that true. That's i know there's people man. out there right now reality. that yeah. are thinking oh my gosh i didn't vote they don't want to they don't want to say it on facebook they don't want to right, talk to right. people about no, it they don't want right. to tell them but you're that's why right. i could have not i could have right. lied i could have said to you guys absolutely that i voted right. but yep. I, I that's why i'm saying i did not vote mm -hmm. and okay. i know that it's important to make the distinction between the reality of what you're dealing with and the choice that you made you know? it, it was it was a combination i can't say it was both it was also negligence on my part like i didn't do what i needed as to do acknowledge that to I'm, do that I understand no but you're still sitting here telling me <laughs> that uh -oh. it was my responsibility it is and it's technically because it is your responsibility civic negligence. responsibility that's your that's you that's for you to keep and I'm saying I'm okay with my decisions Women on what I did. Women couldn't vote in 1920. Women couldn't vote in 1920. And Women I, couldn't do a lot of things in t 1920. Die for it. All right. Well, let's agree to disagree. <laughs> in other news, <laughs> <laughs> Missouri Drop it. has recently legalized medical marijuana. And I'm happy about that. I didn't. I would have voted for that. <laughs> Let's talk about this for a second because this is huge. This mm -hmm. is profound. We we live in Kansas City. It's a, a border city. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We Kansas City has not got enough coverage on the election because uh, we live in a city where it's profoundly affected by the decisions that were just made yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Kansas was elected a, a Democratic governor. Uh, Sharice Davids, a uh, lesbian, Native American, representing KCK. Uh, has was elected to represent the third district in America, uh, in Kansas. Yet on the other side of the st state line, you could throw a stone and get to a, a place where Jeff, Jeff, Holly, Josh Holly was elected. Uh, Jeff, Josh, same thing. Over the incumbent uh, Claire, Mc the two-term incumbent Claire McHaskell as a senator. Uh, in um, Missouri, mm -hmm. and it's a tale of two cities. I mean, it's, it's really, yes, it's, it's it really profound that, uh, mm -hmm. what has just happened, literally in the last twenty-four right hours here, here in or, our or city. We live. And well, um, what what I was just gonna say was that, um, but uh, aside from that, like you would think that okay, uh, I, I think most people have in their mind, uh, at least I do, anyways, and I, I don't necessarily want to speak for everybody. Is that uh, marijuana is a very progressive issue? It However, is a progressive Missouri issue. Just yesterday, elected, uh, voted, in fact, uh, as a state, as mm. citizen in their citizenship, elected to uh, voted on having marijuana, medical marijuana, marijuana, marijuana legal. Right. Yet they mm. voted on a conservative Republican senator. So that <laughs> right. to me, that's in, so uh, bizarre. Uh, so, it's a complex uh, issue, and yeah. you know, and Kansas people don't understate the impact that Kansas City, Kansas has on Kansas City mm -hmm. uh, politics. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's that's a profound issue. So what do you guys think about that? Um, man, I had a thought that it just kind of left me. So. About med um, medical marijuana? Uh -huh. Yeah, about the the convergence and or divergence of uh political issues here in the, in the city of kansas city mm -hmm. that are impacted by overall state views from kansas and missouri i think that's why that's what makes kansas city exciting and unpredictable to live in because it's like you go from one side to the other and it could be completely different um liquor stores stay open till one in missouri exactly close at 11 in it's Kansas. a perk yeah know that stuff. but you Gotta know know knowing that i'm really glad missouri um did pass the medical marijuana because i think mm -hmm. that a lot of, a lot of people need that option jessica jessica um and if you've if you've ever known somebody that has any of those um chronic illnesses that they were speaking of you know that they need those options they need those options and they need that research and they need they need that without having to go to the west coast or the east coast and having it here in the midwest um michigan is uh the first midwest state to to legalize recreational marijuana utah just legalized okay. recreational mar marijuana mm -hmm. so that's really great um but missouri legalizing medical marijuana i think is a is a win for it's the midwest profound. and uh i honestly um 
am like like I almost wanted to cry, and it's like not because I have you don't a, have to drive to Colorado anymore. No. <laughs> <Is that one? laughs> right. Gotta make that long five drive. Miles. He's like, yes, that's save on gas. No, yeah. it's it's funny that you say that, and that that is funny. <laughs> it's it's a, it's a funny thing, but like legitimately, we know people. We know people who mm. legitimately need it. Right. Could I'm use right. it. No, right. yeah. And and they and they Absolutely. find their legitimacy in using mm. it mm. and how the mm. state law is written. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, mm. it breaks my heart every single mm. day mm-hmm. because we know people mm-hmm. that need it yeah. and they refuse to use it mm-hmm. because strictly mm-hmm. of what how the law is written. Yeah. yeah. And they, they disregard what the medical benefits of it are. Mm-hmm. And uh, to me, that li- literally breaks my heart. And I, I'm yeah. not happy with that. And I hope that that sways their opinion of it. Um and uh, it matters to me a lot. Dude, you, and I, I, yeah, I'm, yes, of course, I'm an advocate for marijuana legalization. I'm, I'm an advocate for recreational legalization. Mm-hmm. But uh, I didn't realize how much I am an advocate for it until mm-hmm. I knew somebody that mm-hmm. legitimately right. could benefit from it, right. but was terrified of using it because of the laws. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and this just all the stigma that comes with with using marijuana throughout time that that has been pervasive out there. Um, I think that one thing that some people might not understand is that uh, the being a border state with a state that has legal marijuana, um, that has already been happening. So on the mm, border, of, yeah. like I think it was, there, was a, there was a mother who was in western Kansas. She in would Garden go City, to, Kansas. yep, she would go to Colorado get get marijuana speech. for mm-hmm. her kid. For her kid, she was taken away from her kid. Yeah. So she I went think to the Supreme those, Court, didn't she? Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how far Supreme up Court. it went, but yeah, it was a pretty big case. Which, it, was uh, it was out of Garden City. Yeah, yeah. Sarah. I can't think of her name, but she was running for Kansas Attorney General. I don't know if she won yesterday or not. But she, we're going to follow up on that, and we that. will uh, she was insert the attorney any for the updated information about that on this. Sarah podcast. Swain. That was her name. Sarah Swain was attorney for that. Um, now she might be Attorney General. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so Mm-mm. so cases with uh, with marijuana um, have been ongoing since Colorado. Now Missouri has has approved medicinal marijuana. It's only a matter of time till before Kansas, Kansas has yeah, to do it. And I that, so. and I hope they. So see... then he can just go down the block, right? Instead of five miles. So. I, right. He doesn't have to <laughs> go to Missouri go or <laughs> Colorado. But right. I am happy that's happening. Um, and I hope that Kansas does follow suit. I mean, it seems. It seems like Logical. all states are gonna have to go this states way. Now have medicinal marijuana or, or more. Yes. You know, you know, Is so it? The, I don't know, Sam. Maybe you might have the answer to this, but 30, I feel like maybe states, once three or two thirds of states fall in line with something, does that not become a a federal? They, that means they can change the cost. Federal Exchange like Commission is the one that has to comment on it. I would think, but mm. uh, after. States have been trading. I think there is an infrastructure for it. There has to be a federal commentation on it. But so, once two uh, thirds states, they that. can actually change constitutions and things like that. Yeah. Whatever they. I think they once two thirds states too. is it. I mm-hmm. think it by def. I, I don't. Maybe you, you constitutionalists out there can answer this question. Mm-hmm. But I feel like uh, email us once two once two thirds of the Take states agree the on something so. that de- by de facto it becomes. Mm-hmm. Um, Weed is not Federal constitutionally law. illegal, though. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing. It's yeah. not. It's if, FDA if, scheduled one. Oh. Uh, so. The so Sam federal, Jones has corrected me on the term of constitutionally, uh, constitutionally um, illegal relevance, constitutional relevance. Um, just because states, just because three, two thirds of states. Uh, identify something as legal does not mean it's constitutionally relevant because yeah, no. constitutionally no. just uh, means what is relevant to the constitution yeah. not um, there's no um, there's no yeah, no, there's exactly, no amendment exactly. in the constitution two thirds of states that, only means they can amend the constitution but that is re- irrelevant because the constitution says nothing about marijuana just just like opioids are schedule one they're not constitutionally illegal no drug is constitutionally illegal it's just scheduled mm-hmm. you're scheduled and, the, the and legal actually, schedule marijuana marijuana was once legal in the US up until mm-hmm. like 1920s and 30s and then it was really infamous for mexicans um, it became a doing, racist doing marijuana and so they uh, wanted to legalize cool. it. Oh, all right well thank you for tuning in uh Come back after Dang, the break. Dang, cut us short, but we'll come back after the break. We'll take we- this up.
thank you all for tuning into the Relinio Hour. I'm Pat. And I'm Ruby. And we're here back again with Sam and Chris, Chris Munoz. Munoz. Yes. And Sam actually, he he wanted to join us, and I'm glad we introduced him to the first podcast because now he ha- he he wants to come in here and talk about well, some I, stuff. Well, I think it's it's important. I mean, mm-hmm. politics in our country, this is the foundation of any integration of other societies into our community, and especially the policies that dictate the future of our community. And I think it starts at a fundamental level. What are the fundamentals that uh, dictate and guide us um, as constituents of this this great nation? And I was passionate. I was very. I I think I was aroused to passion um, because uh, a lot of our listeners out there don't know it, but Ruby is a very highly intellectual, powerful mm-hmm. Latino woman in our mm-hmm. community that's mm-hmm. doing great things. And I think it, it, it's important for people such as yourself, seriously, mm-hmm. seriously, mm-hmm. to be a part of the conversation when we're talking about sexual abuse mm-hmm. and when we're talking about the roles of women in our society. And I want to see a future where women are equal and they are not objectified. And it's Mm -hmm. every little increment. It takes tiny pebbles on the beach to create a beach of sand. Mm -hmm. You know, it can't just be one person. It has Mm -hmm. to be a unanimous voice voice when it comes to these things. And uh, I don't think anyone can be, can be silent and your vote is the most potent thing that you can do um, to progress our society in the way that you would like to see it done. So what you're saying is that basically what Ruby has chosen to do by not voting is insanely chosen. reckless and irresponsible. Right? Again, I, I, again, that is for them to keep, <laughs> and their opinions are not passing no, this barrier right no, here. I'm okay no, 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 with no. my decision. You know, but... Uh, on uh, to the fa- to the fan of my really good friend, uh, Ruby. Bad. You guys can. I, I I'm, I'm gonna good. defend her for a second because she is so it's active in the community and she I is tried. such a big part of the Kansas City political atmosphere that no, I don't think her abstaining from this vote. It, you know, I do believe that part of it was uh, an objective choice because negligence. Of, Really, I mean, there there is a lot of hoops you have to jump through, to, and and voter suppression is something that I'm worried about. Um, as and that as actively a white, that actually uh, that actively happened. Voter suppression happened mm-hmm. for brown people, mm-hmm. for felons, for you know what I'm saying. Like that's that's happening to people. So, given your acknowledgement of the situation, I should have voted. Yeah. Just to cut you off, I okay. should have, but I didn't, and I'm okay with that decision. I'm that was yesterday, y'all. I ha- at seven o'clock yesterday. I had to be okay with the fact that I did not vote, and that I had to be okay with the decisions that everybody else made. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. I have faith in the people that did vote. I didn't vote, and next election, next midterms, next election, I will vote. I I won't go through this again. I made this mistake for a reason, so that I don't have to do it again. Um, and I'm I'm okay with my decision, and that's why I'm voicing it. It's embarrassing to have to say well, this. I think that for me, I think that when you think about democracy, when back in the day there's feudalism, there's monarchies where we had kings and queens, where if you're born poor, you're poor, mm-hmm. but then all of a sudden the United States of America came about and we had this new concept that the world never, ever experienced before, and it was called democracy. And the fundamental of democracy was that okay. every single person had a vote every single person that we had representatives that would represent us and it wasn't like in europe it wasn't like in africa it wasn't like in asia the u.s was the first to ever have this thing that we call democracy and the fundamental of democracy is the vote that every person had a say Mm -hmm. and we've had that tradition for what 250 years or so um since 1776 and it was the first time that Everyday people had a say That's in who true. are their leaders. You're misrepresenting what democracy is. Democracy had an established position in humanity, uh, starting from the Greeks, 
And I don't even know what year. You probably know better than I do. Oh, right, let's ask Sam. But, but Sam, let's not, please but let us know. The, the Romans then followed up with it. Uh, yeah. Sam democracy is a has history been a nerd. profound uh, influence in humanity for a very, very mm-hmm. long time. Uh, the the what you're I think what you're describing mm-hmm. is the convergence of uh, democracy and capitalism. Uh, how we experience it here yeah. in the United States of America, at least. Um, and it, it has been a very, very profound influence in, on humanity uh, because of the influence it has had historically, at least in recent history, in terms of how the world operates, in terms of how the United States has had influence on foreign but Fundamentally, though, it needs from, a citizen participation, though. Yeah, but that's something that has been an influence since the Greeks and the Romans. Um, that's, I think that's, uh, that prospect has been slapped on a lot. People don't really understand that. And, um, but I would say it has changed and there has been a lot of influence recently about how it impacts us, democracy. People, I don't think people really truly understand what democracy is. I mean, it, it it really comes down to a fundamental level of, like, the definition of what democracy is. I mean, it's mm-hmm. about the people. Mm-hmm. You know, the people, the people, you know, and people think that democracy to this okay, day common. even think that, like, democracy means people that you elected or people that are in power. But no, it's the people. Just the By collective. By the people, for the people. Uh, so just because you're a senator or just because you're a representative or just because of this or that or whatever... Like, it doesn't matter. Like, just because you're the first gay representative or you're the first le- lesbian or native, like, it doesn't, none of that matters. The mat- what matters is that you are representing the people. Yeah. So well, in, in Democratic instance, Republic is what we are. I think um, it's the people's responsibility to keep, uh, mm-hmm. to make sure that our policymakers are the ones um, that we most believe in. That we believe in, in Pat is right. It doesn't matter where you come from or what has made you uh, to who you are today. It's how are you going to dictate policy to uh, elevate platforms that we all agree with. I'm a person of universal health care. I'm a person that believes in the strength of a middle class, that if you're an educated person, Mm -hmm. that you work 40 hours a week and you're able to provide not for yourself, but for a family. And I think those are policies that we should uh, strive for. Therefore, I cast my vote, which is a democratic process to make sure that these come full circle and we see history guided in a way that, you know, is at least personally, um, you know, close to you. And, and that's how you vote, cast your vote. You want to mm-hmm. make sure. Th- and, and if I, you know, we, we all took tests in high school. And if you had one question with one answer that could sum up your whole life and the things that you pass on to the generations after you, that's probably how we should take every vote that we cast. Right. Right. Not to make to take a comedic turn, but I thought for a second you said I cast my vote. I thought you were gonna say I cast my vote that Ruby gets off the island. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was coming. I was like, it's coming, and no, he didn't come. I was like, okay, okay. If y'all keep acting like that, I'm <laughs> off the island. I'm like, Man, Bye. What's happening? See ya. Man. Anyway. Okay, just to move away from if I voted or not, okay, <laughs> just to get off of that, let's talk about so, something I really, really do want to talk about <laughs> is Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez being the youngest woman ever elected to Congress. Did you guys go see her when she was in KCK? Yes, I know me and Pat I did. did. Yes, I did. I was Chris there. did. I go, I go, you guys doubted it, but I was there. I have proof. Snapchat. It's on my video. Uh, no, it's very, very profound. Um, mm-hmm. She came here to uh, with Bernie Sanders Bernie to Sanders, campaign yeah. for Brett Welder, who yeah. ended up losing in the primary race to Sharice Davis, mm-hmm. who uh, in her own right uh, made a very, very huge impact on yeah. Kansas politics and became the first Native American woman, mm-hmm. the youngest mm-hmm. and or the first Native American woman to be elected to the Kansas House of Representatives. Mm-hmm. Um, when? Wow. Just, like, wow. Seriously. Well, um, 
Well, one thing that I guess I would want to say to the listeners is that if you don't know the story of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, you should definitely read up on her. Google her, whatever you want. A year ago, literally, probably now, waiting a year tables, and a half ago, she was waiting tables. She was bartending. Mm-hmm. So if you're a bartender, if you're a waitress, and anybody else who's working class, you can do it. She's literally took down... Um, what is it like the second most powerful Democrat behind Nancy Pelosi? Um, she took down, I forgot how, how many uh, terms he had. It he was had. a very, it, it was, was a long like time. Like 15 like, I was, terms. Yeah, I was going like, to say like 10. Or more, yeah, yeah, at least like 10 term incumbent Democrat, you know, 55 year old. She's 28 years old and she defeated him. And a year and a half ago, again, she was working class, um, helping her parents, helping her mom out waitressing bartending and she defeated him so any anything is possible you guys just got to go out you guys reach for the stars it was joe crowley that joe was, crowley. There that you was go. the democrat oh she yeah defeated i saw those in debates. new york oh she was a pit bull when and those debates oh, she good was to fierce see. it's good to fierce. see it's good to see new policy makers new blood oh, coming yeah. to mm-hmm. uh you know um I, you know, and I, and I'm curious. Do you think there's potential in uh, our political atmosphere right now for bipartisan uh, support mm. to get some of our more uh, pertinent mm. issues pushed? I mean, mm. I mean, really, there's there's Honestly, 40 million know. people in our country that are that do not health have health insurance, which mm. means they mm. die. I was one only of because those they can until recently. To because live. Letters, letters on a piece of paper. It raises, it raises an hurts. interesting question because mm. there are, there is bipartisan support for that, but it's the question of who benefits, right? Who benefits from what, the platform that she is presenting mm-hmm. and who hurts from it? Um in my opinion, I think that uh, racism plays a huge factor into it. It's not racism like what we may maybe perceive racism as, but historical and systemic racism mm-hmm. as yeah. her coming in and making an impact for the change in what has been considered historical racism. And if that affects the status quo, quote unquote, the status quo of historically wealthy white people uh, being the benefactor of what has been historically the predominant political parties in America, then uh, I think that means something. I think that it's, it's it's a question of the conversation of are we going to acknowledge that racism has had a, a systemic impact in politics in our country, or are we going to not acknowledge that? It I, it has, a hundred percent. I think I think you're going to see a trend in politics right now uh, when it comes to races and ethnicity uh, and ethnicity um, that kind of represents. The minorities in our country. We're going to see more mm-hmm. politicians that come from minorities as more minorities come into our country. And I think it's going to take time, but the assimilation of other es- ethnicities and uh, races that come into our country. Um, Wait, can I stop you right there? Because you said you specified as more minorities come into our country as if to say a bunch of minorities don't already exist here. You mean that caravan? <laughs> so joking. it's as if to say that <laughs> you're giving approval, not you as an individual. I mean, but yeah, people hope, in general yeah. are giving but all of a sudden approval saying. to the the fact that there are a multiplicity of ethnicities here in America and that do matter here. All of a sudden, they're giving the uh, stamp of approval. You know, and it's like, okay, as if it, they haven't been here, as if the, their presence doesn't didn't matter before. I think their presence is dictated by foreign policy that we make. I mean, we're overcoming and out, an overwhelming economically and territorially uh, since the 1800s as an American empire. We're going to see as we get into these quagmires, such as Turkey, such as the Middle quagmires. East, quagmires, uh, and these wars giggity that, gig. yeah, giggity gig. <laughs> and, uh, and, I mean, 
what are these sects and ethnicities, uh, mm-hmm. what are we expecting them to do? Are we expecting them to live in turmoil? Or are we expecting them to come over here and assimilate and be a part of the it American lexicon? Mm-hmm. I think the first thing that they want and expect is to simply be acknowledged as people. And seen. And that's you- what that's what Alexandra Ocasio, Ocasio sorry, Cortez did. And that's how she got to where she's at because she saw those people that didn't have a voice. And that's part of the reason. I know Chris was like, he's moved by it. But, I, you know, I listened to a segment on Latino USA about her. And I honestly was at my desk crying when I was listening to it. If you guys haven't, look into this lady. She's the youngest woman ever elected to Congress. And she was waiting Working tables class, a waiting year tables. ago. Oof. And, you know... I know we want to talk about politics and and we want to talk about all, you know, go vote, your voice matters, but honestly, your actions matter and you could be in a different position in a year from now if you really want to take a stand and I, you know, I didn't vote and that hurt me. But at the same time, that's something that can fuel me to do something later. And, you know, if you didn't vote, if you did vote and you didn't like the outcome, you can take it and do something with it as of now. You can do that. And and we have proof. We have a millennial woman, Latina, that has done it. And she's in Congress right now. She's the youngest ever. And, you know, I really look up to her and I loved watching her speak mm-hmm. when she was here. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that's important, too, to talk about. Uh, mm-hmm. That's our timer. But if I'm not mistaken, I think Acosta Cortez. She probably did voted. vote. Yeah, she probably did vote. <laughs> she did. Uh, yeah. So and, and I that's mean, why that's, we're that's not the same. Ruby, Ruby and I will we'll disagree. <laughs> that's all right. We'll still be friends after the show. I'm I think okay. We can only I'm okay win with it. Through when people vote. I and I truly believe our forefathers were well beyond their time in setting mm-hmm. up our systemic rules mm-hmm. and uh-huh. guidelines of Sex equality and, and liberty and what it means to be free in actuality, and that's life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we have to perform well as demographics within the political atmosphere that we're a part of. And I want to see an America even more diverse than it is mm-hmm. today and more accommodating, whether it is sexual orientation, whether it is race, whether, you know, it's questions. And I think we're always going to be evolving to the atmosphere that we're in. And, uh, you know, being a part of that process as opposed to outright negatively uh, opposing it is always, I I think, the best policy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you're right. Like, the demographics is inevitable, whether they stop immigration and everything to this country it's inevitable that this country is going to turn browner and darker um, more minority oriented and it's inevitable that hopefully we get more representatives and and politics and leaderships and boardrooms that look more like america but what we're going through right now is the first steps of that where we're we're bumping heads where people are kind of afraid of that they they think that you know it's different that we're taking we're coming to bring take jobs or we don't want to assimilate but even though, I mean, we're like almost, I mean, I know my dad was from Mexico. I think your parents were yep, from Mexico. Straight up. And look, we're fluent in English. We are college educated. We assimilated. It doesn't mean that I mean, we're proud to be. It's not different. And it, this is the new normal. And like all of this conversation aside, we haven't even acknowledged the first women in Congress, mm-hmm. Rashida Talib and mm-hmm. Ian Omar, uh, the first elected Muslim women in America to Congress. Uh, that's, I mean, we have this entire conversation on record and we did not even acknowledge them. And that's, uh, frankly a shame. Um, but at the same time, like, please acknowledge them and please, uh, acknowledge that we, uh, respect that. And, um, so much has happened in the last few days regarding the, um, election day in America and take it, you know, what we have to say with the grain of salt and please do your own research yeah. and please do your own due diligence in terms of things that what's important to you in, uh, American electoral system and, um, and everything like that so but thank you all so much for tuning in to this conversation it's been an absolute pleasure to be here with sam and chris munoz Mm -hmm. 
And myself, I'm Pat. And I'm Ruby. We're the Millennials. And uh, again, thank you so much. Please feel free to reach out to us regarding any of this conversation. You can hit us up at our Gmail at themillennials at gmail.com. We're also on Instagram at the Millennials on Facebook, the Millennials. And uh, or hit us up on our individual stuff. So thank you, thank you again. We can't thank you enough for being a part of this conversation. Um, and remember, everybody, stay woke and do your research. We're only here to give you our opinions, but we want you guys to do the critical thinking. Make the decisions for yourself. Be yourself. Think for yourself. And we're here to just support you on that. Any last thoughts, Chris? Um, I hope that you guys got something from this conversation. Um, like Ruby said, I just want to echo her sentiments that, you know, do your research, be active. That's the way, in my opinion, democracy works, to be informed. Absolutely. Sam? Uh, yeah, just, uh, I guess, uh, jump on that bandwagon. I think the most important thing that you can do politically is to be a part of the smallest community and uh, do small good things that change right. everyday lives ripple effect the yeah. ripple effect I like yeah. it. also don't listen to sam with his outstanding mustache <laughs> I like super it. I like cool it. mustache right, he has a bigger mexican mustache than us and we'll see you next time bye guys bye